are seeing the President of the United States. Look at the lines. You joined our movement. A lot of uh, President Trump supporters the greatest here. Greatest movement in the history of our country. I'm fighting for you and I love doing it with everything that I have. And I will never, ever stop. We are one people, one family, and one glorious nation under God. We will make America great again. Welcome to Team Trump Online. Wednesday just got better because the ladies are live discussing the hottest topics of the week with you tonight. And we will make America great again. everybody, I'm Laura Trump and welcome to The Right View. With me as always is Kimberly Guilfoyle, Katrina Pearson, and Mercedes Schlapp. Uh, ladies, welcome back after Labor Day. I had a great time with my family. I, I saw that you guys were posting things as well. And I think one of the things that I was most excited to see was the support for President Trump over the past weekend. My friends all across the country were sending me crazy videos in lakes, in rivers, in the ocean, uh, in bays all across the country of the Trump boat parades. I mean, in places that nobody would ever expect it. It was awesome, awesome to see. Um, so I want to ask you guys, what did you see? What did you hear? Uh, Mercy, how about you? Well, my stop was over in Arizona. We had multiple uh, field offices that we visited. It's, of course, the Women for Trump bus tour uh, with Senator Martha McSally, obviously an ally of the president, someone we need back in the Senate to help the president uh, get his agenda done. And I got to tell you, what I always love about these trips, and while there's not, you know, an ocean near Arizona, there were some lakes that they were able to do some boat parades, but it's the fact that it's these women, and we see this all the time, women who are the ones uh, managing these field offices. And I think the one moment that really stuck out for me was, and Katrina, you'll appreciate this so much, and, and all of you, was I visited for the first time a Latino for Latinos for Trump Community Center. And we spent so much time coming up with this concept and building out the freedom, family, uh, opportunity, faith, all of the verbiage that goes with it, and being there in person, uh, with our Latinos, with many in the black community, I thought was just, for me, incredibly inspirational because Republicans have failed time and time again to reach out to the Latino community, to the black community. And for President Trump, this has been a priority uh, since day one. So it, for me, it was a dream come true being in the Latinos for Trump Community Center in Arizona. So great. Uh, Tim, you actually were in a boat parade, part of a boat parade. What happened I'm to you? I'm jealous. I'm jealous. I can't. Yes. Uh, doing my best to reenact the Titanic scene in the front. You know, I love a good uh, wingspan, okay? My God. But yes, if you haven't been literally participating or part of a Trump boat, boat parade, it's got to be on your bucket list. And I know yeah. you ladies like to have fun. I'm telling you, it was absolutely fantastic. So Don and I attended with a bunch of our friends this weekend. I was shocked. Like, even Don was shocked. It takes a lot to shock him oh, wow. about the thousands of boats. We were even going to try to go under this bridge, this overpass, whatever, and we could you can't even get, it was just a wall, sea of boats all along, up and down the whole coast there, intercoastal in Florida, thousands and thousands of supporters. Every business had people coming out, cheering, going crazy. It's probably the best I felt about this election, and I felt really good about it. This was like, you know what? I got to tell you something. Something's going on here. People were really fired up. Um, just, you know, waving flags and yelling their support. And it was just incredible. So I don't care what the polls say. Um, yeah. There's no chance like that Trump's not going to just crush it in Florida. And his lead, as we've even seen in some of these polls, Biden's lead is collapsing. And especially, look, mercy amongst Latinos, right? 
Trump is up there, so it's going to be good. I know we'll be planning to go back to Orlando, do some stuff. I think we're going to hit Puerto Rico as well, um, just to show some support. So I'm excited about it. And uh, I'm ready to call Florida for President Trump. <laughs> early, early, let's do it today. Early, early call. Yeah, I'm awesome. very, very excited. Well, I feel like Katrina that people are now we're in we're in what we call really the home stretch. Post Labor Day, that's when we really kick things into high gear from a campaign perspective. And I feel like that's what we're seeing out there from people, right? Like they're ready to campaign for President Trump. They're ready for four more years. Oh, Laura, they are so ready to campaign. They're ready to vote. You know, there's yeah. so many people out there who are like, you know what, let's just get this over with. There is no shortage of boat parades or flotillas, as we hear them called the many, truck, many, the many truck times. Parade, right? Or, yeah, or the even the Trump too. parades. Yeah. You know, we were in a bus tour in, in Texas, actually, going into the weekend. And, you know, to Mercy and, and Kimberly's points, the Latinos for Trump they are out there, they are fired up, and they are ready to get President Trump reelected. We even had the Border Patrol Union folks come out and, yeah. and show their support for President Trump. It was just so inspiring, um, considering everything that our country has been through. People know that President Trump has been right there standing strong alongside of them, fighting for them, and the media, it, it, they just don't know what to do about it. And that's why a lot of Americans are like, you know what, let's get this show on the road. Come on, November, because they're ready for term number two for President Trump. Hey, well, hey I, real quick, did you all see the Biden boat? Was there just even one Biden boat? Yeah, yeah there was like <laughs> a, one like Biden sign, like someone standing on the shore. They didn't even have like a canoe was it leaning? their heart. Oh. It's hysterical. I mean, oh my God. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's so By the sad. way, yeah. I don't even, like, you see all these Trump flags everywhere, right? Like, they're boats that have, like, 30 Trump flags on them. Yeah. The president uh, called me and Eric the other day, and he was like, these boat parades are amazing. Have you seen them? And I said, yeah, they all have Trump flags. And I said, I have yet to see if Biden even has a flag. Does Biden even, do they even have a flag for Joe Biden? The answer right. is probably no, because let's be honest, nobody wants to fly that when you only fly that when you're inspired and... Thumbs down for for uh, for exactly. Joe Biden. I think Look, they don't even people. like the they don't even like the American flag. So I doubt. Oh, yeah. Biden. Why would they exactly? Good point. <laughs> Good point. Well, I want to bring in Andy Puzder, former CEO of CKE Restaurants. Andy, we're so excited to get you on the show. You are another person I think excited for a possible four more years of Donald Trump, right? Yep, absolutely. I can't wait. It's wonderful to be on with the four of you. I don't know any group of people that's doing any more to make sure this president gets reelected. And that's uh, that's the most important thing we've got going on right now. Oh, well, thank you. Listen, we, we saw another blockbuster jobs report released last Friday. Nearly 1.4 million jobs now added back to the American economy. So, Andy, can you break this down? This, this jobs report really blew people away, I think. Talk about what this means for the great American comeback. Now, look, this was a tremendous report. And if anybody's telling you that's not true, it's probably a liberal economist who never had a job or never ran a business. I mean, this was an amazing report. And it's amazing not only the numbers themselves, but let's, let's compare it to, Ob to Obama and the Obama-Biden era. For example, in July, the unemployment rate was 10.2%. In August, it went down to 8.4%. That was in one month. It took Obama and Biden 27 months after the recession to get the unemployment rate from 10% to under 8.5%. Wow. So 27 months versus one month. We have 141 million jobs in the United States. After the recession, it took uh, Obama and Biden five and a half years to come to 141 million jobs. We've done it in four months under President Trump. We added 3,756,000 people, 3,756,000 more people were employed in August than were in July. That's the third best month on record. Um, the set, by the way, it's better than July. Everybody talks about things are slowing down. That's not true. Tell that to the 3.75 million people that are working that weren't working in July. For Obama and Biden, right, that, that's better than, that's five times better than any month during their entire administration. So the, these are great numbers. And now GDP now out of the Federal Reserve Bank out of Atlanta is projecting that uh, GDP growth for the third quarter will be 29.6%. That's the best month, best quarter over quarter 
uh, GDP number ever in the history of the country. There, there's never been an, a number even comparable to that. So these numbers are spectacular. They continue to grow, and it's all it really is all thanks to, uh, to President Trump and his policies. Absolutely. And, you know, the uh, Congressional Budget Office, CBO, projected that the American unemployment rate would be about 16 percent at this point. So it's actually nearly double the actual current 8.4 percent rate. So, Andy, talk to us about how the experts continue. They do this all the time. It's their superpower to bet against President Trump, try to make everything doomsday and say that it's going to be this bad. And then now look at we're witnessing actually the fastest labor market recovery uh, from an economic crisis in history. You know, even just to add to that, Kim, even the uh, the economists that were surveyed by Bloomberg the day before these numbers came out said unemployment would come in at 9.8 percent. Wow. So the num the numbers are tremendous. Wow. Every it's like every economic number you get now, whether it's housing, retail sales, manufacturing, everything has to be qualified with the phrase beats economist expectations. And that's because, as has been the case throughout the Trump administration, these economists underestimate the American people, they underestimate, underestimate American entrepreneurs and businesses, and they overestimate government. So what they want to see is government programs, government spending, government uh, uh, guiding the economy. And when they don't see that, they underestimate where the economy is going to go. We've seen that throughout the Trump administration. The last four months have been absolutely no different. Uh, they can't seem to get, not only do they get it wrong, but they always get it wrong the wrong way, right? It, they're always underestimating how well the economy is going to do. They never actually overestimated. During the Obama era, I'm sure you all recall, all they ever did was overestimate what he was going to do because they thought government spending, they thought more government in the economy was better for the economy. Our president knows that's not true. He's been out there in the private sector. He knows what's going on. And, uh, and he's been able to direct the economy in the right direction. And we see the results. We see it every month. Yeah, you know, you mentioned the the overestimating, underestimating, and I love it when they give these predictions because that just means that our president is going to exceed everything. Exactly. And you know, the reason why they underestimate the people is because for decades, there's been zero leadership with regards to, you know, taking on China, taking on trade and all of these things that, you know, we all heard back in 2016 that that couldn't be done. And here we have a leader who's actually getting it done. But I, I love the comparison you made with the Obama Biden administration, uh, because Joe Biden's actually promising a return, if you can believe that, <laughs> to the same old failed liberal economic policies. Let's take a look at this new ad and I want to get your response. In the race for a vaccine, the finish line is approaching safety protocols in place and the greatest economy the world has ever seen coming back to life but joe biden wants to change that i would shut it down why would we ever let biden kill countless american businesses jobs and our economic future when president trump's great american comeback is now underway i'm donald j trump and i approve this message so andy look i need your professional opinion wouldn't a Joe Biden presidency pose a threat to the great American comeback? It's a tremendous threat. You have to remember, you know, the Obama-Biden years were, were horrific. There was limited opportunity. We, when they left office, we had 1.9 million more people unemployed than we had job openings. Uh, wages had stagnated. Wages stagnated. They were below 3%. The entire post uh, recession recovery, and people were dropping out of the labor force. The labor force participation rate went down over the entire Obama-Biden administration. President Trump reversed all of that. You know, we, we ended up with uh, 24 months of more job openings and people unemployed. For 17 of those months, there were a million or more job openings and people unemployed. Tremendous opportunity. That drove wages up 20 consecutive months with 3% plus wage growth. And people rejoined the labor force. Remember, we always heard, all oh, the labor force participation can't go up because baby boomers are retiring. Well, baby boomers are still retiring. The labor participation went up before the uh, pandemic, and it's gone up since the pandemic. So we've really seen private sector pro-growth policies replacing these big government government spending policies. And if you look, if you look at Biden's policies, and I wish people would talk about this more. He doesn't have one single policy where he says, you know, this is going to encourage private sector growth. 
Not one. Everything he has is, we'll grow this government department, we'll grow that government department, we'll spend money here, we'll spend money there. And somehow he thinks that's going to turn the economy around. Look what happened with the $8 billion stimulus. They promised unemployment would never go above 8% if we spent $800 billion. Well, we spent it. Unemployment went above 8% the month they passed the bill, and it stayed there for the next 43 months. I mean, this going back to what Joe Biden and Barack Obama did would absolutely destroy all the progress we've made under President Trump. It would be a disaster for the country. Andy, uh, we know Joe Biden is hitting the campaign trail. He got out of his basement, you know, that happens on occasion. And then he takes like two days off and then he goes back on the campaign trail. Gotta rest up. That's right. And then he sends Kamala out. Uh, and he's in Michigan today. He's talking about this Made in America initiative, which I find it hysterical because the president has been talking about buy America, hire America since day one. And we know that this is like the copycat version for Joe Biden. But let me ask you, when it comes to the American worker, President Trump has said Joe Biden will go and shake the hand of the American workers, but then basically stab them in the back turn their backs on the American workers, partially because we know that Joe Biden's trade deals, ha has al they've always benefited places like China and Mexico and not the United States and not our American workers. Why is Joe Biden's record on his trade deals such a dismal failure? Well, he just doesn't understand what's good for American workers. Look, you can't you can't allow people into the country, you know, with the, the immigration problem we have and flood them with people who can take American jobs. You can't enter into agreements with foreign governments that favor those governments and drive businesses into the hands of those other government of, of those other countries. Look, what you remember before, just before the election, uh, uh, Barack Obama was talking about President Trump's promise to redo these trade agreements. And he said, well, how are you going to do that? What magic wand do you have? Well, you didn't need a magic wand. You needed a president with some courage, some tenacity, who would say, look, you know, we're going, we're a very powerful economy. We are your best customer, and we're going to put tariffs on everything you send in here unless you cut a better deal with us. All of a sudden, we're getting all these better deals. Uh, it wasn't like a magic wand. It was just having a president with the courage to do that. And anybody who thinks Joe Biden would have the courage to do that is, is, is just dreaming. And by the way, he came out of the basement because of Kenosha. You know, when, when Chicago, New York, San Francisco, Los Angeles, when there's riots and looting in Seattle and Portland, I think people in the suburbs say, look, it, is, it isn't here. I, you know, what are you going to do? Those places are crazy. When it happens in Kenosha, Wisconsin, America stands up and takes it and, and notices. And Biden had to come out of the basement. But on trade deals, he'd be a disaster. He's, uh, he's a Chinaphobe. He loves China. <laughs> So, Andy, I think the reason that we don't hear Joe Biden talking about private sector growth, uh, that he knows how to create jobs in this country, is because this guy has actually never had a job in this country. I mean, this is you compare that to President Trump. This is a man that front, signed the front of checks his whole life, uh, not the back of a check. Joe Biden has no idea how to actually create jobs, right? He has absolutely no idea. And, and as I mentioned, he, the, he doesn't have one program that would create a private sector job. How much have you read about that in the press? How much have journalists covered the fact that this guy doesn't have a single program that would create a private sector job? Everything he talks about is the government spending. This is another fake news. They'd rather talk about some fake story about President Trump making comments that anybody who knows wow. him knows he never would have made. Crazy. They'd rather talk about that than talk about the fact that Joe Biden has no plan. Yep, they're trying to distract the American people. Well, Andy Puzzer, thank you so much. As always, thank we love you. getting your thoughts. Thank, thank you for being with everybody. us. Uh, and thank everybody you. else, stay right where you are. We'll be right back after this.
Welcome back to The Right View. I'm Kimberly Guilfoyle. And you know we're really gearing up into the general election when the giant false stories from the mainstream media begin to drop. Now, last week, we saw one of the most disgusting examples of this with the recent fake news story from The Atlantic about President Trump. So, Katrina, there's 21 officials, 14 who are actually on the Paris trip, who have gone on record refuting the anonymous sources in The Atlantic story. Do you think that the media will retract this debunked fake news story? Well, they have the integrity um, to do that. No, Kimberly, because the media is too busy creating the narrative. Uh, to to really address the facts. I mean, these people are about, you know, trying to correct the record. They're out there. They were there. But that's just a distraction for the media. Um, and, and that's what's truly unfortunate. And, and they do it on purpose. The press is intentionally trying to manipulate the masses so that the people only can think and believe what the media tells them to. But this time, I think it's the wrong issue. Uh, because they're trying to convince the American public that President Trump, our president, the President Trump, of all people, has anything less than love and respect for our military. But that just goes to show you how ridiculously out of touch the mainstream media is and just how desperate they've become. Absolutely. It's, it's really unacceptable and such a shame because, quite frankly, I mean, look, presidents love uh, the military, but nobody like President Trump that has done more for, respected the military provided for our veterans and been a game changer for them, making sure that they actually have the resources that they need out there in the field, and then also ending these endless wars where our young you know, men and women lose their lives, you know, fighting in places that we shouldn't still be in. So God bless him for his courage. Um, Mercy, so you worked in the White House for nearly two years. Can you speak to how much President Trump truly respects and loves our veterans and our service members? Yeah. Kimberly, we spent a lot of time uh, with the president in the Oval Office when he would make the calls to the military families who had lost loved ones. And he was always so compassionate and he always understood that we had to do everything we could to protect the lives of our military and of our veterans. And it's why he has been just one of the most amazing presidents when it comes to ending the endless wars, bringing our troops back home. I mean, he's just uh, announcing, obviously, troop withdrawal in Iraq. Uh, we've seen him take steps in, in countries like Syria. Why? Because he's like, we don't need our guys and our, you know, and our ladies of the armed forces getting shot, uh, tragically injured or die because um, they're out defending other countries. And so uh, I, I always uh, just remember those conversations with him when he would say, and he would go to Walter Reed and visit with our wounded soldiers, and he would say how sad it would be to, to talk to one of the soldiers or the soldier's family. And, you know, the soldier is just so, so injured that, you know, God only knows he has such a long way towards recovery. And it really always impacted the president personally. And that's why it was so hurtful when you saw this, this pack of lies, which you know what they do, Kimberly and our wonderful ladies? This is what they do. The story comes out, it goes viral on social media. Biden then makes talks about it in a speech and then they do an ad, the Biden people. Seems it's a little planned, Mercy. What do you think? Seems like it was a everybody in cahoots. I don't know. Exactly. Yeah. It's like this fake news Democrat Party cycle of what they the messaging they push out to try to damage the president's uh, reputation with the military, stellar reputation with the military and our vets. And that's why it was so such an insult to all of us who have spent time with the president and have seen him uh, engaging with our veterans, supporting our military day in and day out. I got to say this just really quickly. When I first heard about this article, I just read the headline no. And I was like, nobody right. believes this. This is no. total yeah. garbage because anyone, mercy to your point, that has been around this president knows how much he respects and reveres and loves our military. He talks about it all the time. He shows you with his actions everything you guys just described. I actually thought it was laughable, and I said, nobody will believe this, but you're right. The mainstream media is all wrapped up with the Democrat Party. We know they're right. their marketing arm. They're desperate to try and prop up Joe Biden and do jazz hands. Look over here. Look at this Atlantic article. Don't look at Joe yeah. Biden, who hasn't been to Wisconsin in 674 days. Don't look at Joe Biden, who has no idea how to bring this country back 
It is so ridiculous and so false and so upsetting. I couldn't even believe that anybody gave it any credence at all. But this is where we are. This is how the mainstream media operates. This is what they do. Yeah, this is their playbook. Well, unsurprisingly, Joe Biden and his campaign are also spreading absurd lies about President Trump. And the Washington Post recently gave Biden's false claims about President Trump cutting Social Security for Pinocchios. Doesn't get worse than that. Uh, if the liberal Washington Post is fact-checking Joe Biden, you know the lie is pretty egregious. But in reality, Joe Biden is the only candidate who repeatedly tried to cut Social Security benefits. Let's watch this clip. When I argued that we should freeze federal spending, I meant Social Security as well. I meant Medicare and Medicaid. I meant veterans benefits. I meant every single solitary thing in the government. And I not only tried it once, I tried it twice, I tried it a third time, and I tried it a fourth time. So, Laura, I want to get your reaction to that and what it says about Joe Biden, that he's attempting to scare American seniors into voting for him. Well, I mean, I think that's probably the only tactic that they have left is to try and scare people. Because when you actually break down the things that Joe Biden stands for, it is ridiculous. And nobody wants to vote for that. So they, they falsely accuse the president of trying to cut Social Security, uh, which if the Washington Post, to your point, introing that clip, uh, Kimberly, if the Washington Post, who absolutely hates the president, is looking at every turn to destroy him and to, to do anything to disparage him, if they claim that it's a four Pinocchio lie, I mean, this is absurd. But they're trying to scare people because, again, no one is A, excited about Joe Biden, Nobody, B, really thinks that he would be the president, if we're all being honest. I mean, he doesn't know half the time where he is. So if he were to get elected, it would be the far left socialists pulling the strings behind the scenes, implementing all this radical change that they want to see in our country, turning our entire country into Portland's, into Seattle's, yeah. into, you know, Chicago's and now New York City, where I can't even go anymore. Kimberly, it's terrifying. You and I live in New York. Uh, everybody true. knows it is not the same New York it was six months ago. Absolutely terrifying to people. That's what they want to do to this entire country. They want open borders. They want to abolish police. And, and they just want to have a big uh, love fest, kumbaya, like we saw happen in Seattle at the Chop Chaz Zone. So that is why they're trying to scare people because nobody actually wants to vote for any of Joe Biden's policies. Absolutely right. Now, you know, the Democrats are now embracing the anti-vax movement. So both Kamala Harris and Joe Biden are sowing doubt about a future coronavirus uh, vaccine, something that could threaten millions of lives. Let's watch this absurd clip of Kamala Harris on CNN. And do, but do you trust that in the situation where we're in now that the public health experts and the scientists will get the last word on the efficacy of a vaccine. If past is prologue, that they will not. They'll be muzzled. They'll be suppressed. They will be sidelined because he's looking at an election coming up in less than 60 days and, um, and he's grasping for whatever he can get to pretend that he has been a leader on this issue when he has not. So let's just say there's a vaccine that is approved and even distributed before the election. Would you get it? Well, I think that's gonna be an issue for all of us. Um, I will say that I would not trust Donald Trump and it would have to be a credible source of information that talks about the, um, the efficacy and the, and the reliability of whatever he's talking about. I will not take his word for it. All right, I want to get everyone's thoughts on this. So, Katrina, I'm going to start with you. Uh, we'll do a quick uh, roundup on it, and then Laura and Mercy. Yeah, I mean, how reckless and irresponsible was this woman to say that somehow, because there's a, a, an election coming, that, that the president would allow people to potentially be harmed or even killed by something? Um, mm -hmm. This is completely over the top. A lot of people are really upset about it. And the fact that this disproportionately impacts Black Americans and she's sowing even more fear um, into people, I think is truly disgusting. Yeah, by the way, uh, I'd like to remind her, Donald Trump was not in the lab creating the vaccine. It was scientists, it was medical professionals who are creating the vaccine, Kamala. Hello, 
I wouldn't trust Donald Trump. Are you kidding me? This is absolutely disgusting. These people ought to be ashamed of themselves. I know they aren't because they have no conscience and mor no moral compass whatsoever. They're just they're talk about useful. grasping. This is a grasp for power if I have ever seen it and a it's grasp so at desperation. Ridiculous. I wouldn't trust Donald Trump. Hey, Kamala, he didn't make the vaccine. Scientists and professionals who actually do this for a job and a living made it. Just going to throw it out there. Yeah, Mercy, I mean, it's just delusional. Like, these people have no grip with reality or what's actually happening or going on in the world. And they'll say or do anything uh, to get elected and try and, you know, and also try to steal the election. But get your thoughts to what Kamala had to say. Yeah, you nailed that, Kimberly, because let me tell you, this is pure, raw politics for Kamala. And this fear mongering is unacceptable. This is a moment in time where, as a nation, we want to ensure that we develop this vaccine for the safety and health of all Americans. Mm -hmm. And the mere fact that they've injected politics into this debate about the vaccine is disturbing, and it, sh and it should be called out. And it's why we know that President Trump and also Dr. Fauci has said there's been no political pressure placed on our experts. They're getting the job done. They're working through the trials. And the problem is the Democrats don't want to praise the president for the great work he's done with Operation Warp Speed and, and trying to get this vaccine developed. Well, yeah. you know, the question I have, Kimberly, is yeah. someone should ask Kamala Harris that if a vaccine is developed and Joe Biden wins in November, would she withhold it? That's Ooh. what I'd like to know. Oh, oh my shit. God. There you go. Katrina with the knockout punch. <laughs> All right. So thank you, everybody. We're going to be right back after this short commercial break. Keep it right here on The Right View. Antifa is destroying our communities, rioting, looting. Yet Joe Biden kneels down and his staff sends money for bail. And Biden fails to stand up to the radical leftists fighting to defund and abolish the police. With Biden kneeling to the left, we'd have chaos in the streets. President Trump is standing up for us, keeping our communities safe, protecting minority-owned businesses, and always standing for our flag. I'm Donald J. Trump, and I approve this message. Kamala Harris ran for president by rushing to the radical left, embracing Bernie's plan for socialized medicine, calling for trillions in new taxes, attacking Joe Biden for racist policies. Voters rejected Harris. They smartly spotted a phony. But not Joe Biden. He's not that smart. Biden calls himself a transition candidate. He is handing over the reins to Kamala while they jointly embrace the radical left. Slow Joe and phony Kamala, perfect together, wrong for America. Welcome back to The Right View. I'm Mercedes Schlapp, senior advisor for the Trump-Pence campaign. And we are now wrapping up, getting our final thoughts of this wonderful, great show. And Laura, I'm going to start with you. Well, I just want to let everybody know that I know we've talked about our bus tours. We are out on the road from now until Election Day. So we'd love to see you. We are probably coming to a town near you, certainly to your state at some point. You can go to DonaldJTrump.com and click on the event tab. You can find where our bus tour is headed. Uh, this week, I will personally be in Nebraska, in Minnesota, in Iowa. Uh, next week, we will have our bus tour in Florida. The week after, bus tour in North Carolina. So please sign up. Come out and see us. Uh, we would love to have you participate. Um, it would be great to, to see you in person and to get you involved with the campaign because we know this election is critical. It's absolutely crucial that Donald Trump wins. So we'd love to see you out there. That's great. I do agree the bus tours are just such a special time and we really get to interact with the crowd and just meet these fabulous women for Trump. It's just amazing. Kimberly, final thoughts. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm really excited. I got back very late uh, last night, but we just finished up an amazing fundraising haul. I, you know it's good when I call it a haul <laughs> in Florida. So Don Jr. and I hosted seven events, several of them with Governor DeSantis, and we also held a roundtable with Richard Corcoran, who is the Commissioner of Education, and some incredible school choice leaders in Florida, and it was it was really incredible. It was very informative, and that's not to mention the uh, boat parade that we had as well, which also raised money, and then we ended last night in Cincinnati with a great event, um, so I'm sure you're all seeing this too, but the energy and the enthusiasm 
is overwhelming for the president. I look at all these events that I'm doing. I look at the amazing crowds, you know, hundreds of people showing up, you know, even, you know, during COVID appropriately distance, et cetera. But it's amazing what you can do in some of these states that have some sensibility about opening this country back up safely. So they're just really inspired by President Trump and it's inspirational to us as well. Loving every minute of it. 54 beautiful days left till we get this president reelected. And I can't wait to uh, run into y'all out on the road soon. But um, so I'm doing both, doing the money, doing the politics, getting out there um, so we can get it done. For the record, Kimberly never sleeps. I think that's never. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, her, try to get that she last and she's night. not allowed to sleep. Not yet. <laughs> you can sleep after November 3rd, OK? That's what I said. Oh, my God. Um, my sweet Katrina, who I miss you terribly. I miss you, too. Oh, You'll see me after the Florida bus tour. Yes. I'll be with uh, Laura for that. I'll be in Georgia tomorrow all day visiting the Black Voices for Trump offices. Um, and as Laura mentioned, Florida, North Carolina, plus a Georgia bus tour. There's a Texas tour, I believe, this weekend. So we are all so busy and out there fighting and wanting to meet everyone. So go to donaldjtrump.com forward slash events to find out where we will be so you can come see us. And my final thought for today, uh, Mercedes, is a Norwegian official has nominated President yes. Trump for a Nobel Peace Prize for his efforts with the UAE and Israel peace deal. Uh, you know, this is something that I think um, is long overdue because this president yes. has been, you know, fighting globally uh, for peace and prosperity and, you know, really at the forefront of doing things non-traditionally um, against the grain uh, you know, which is what a visionary does. And so he's truly a leader before his time uh, for our country. And so hopefully, you know, the world recognizes his efforts. That is amazing. And we're so proud of our president so and his great team for getting that done. It is very historic. It's taken decades for any Republican to get the sort of deal which we know uh, would lead to Middle East prosperity and peace. And it's and it's so well deserved. Our president deserves uh, the Nobel Peace Prize. He's really, truly an amazing leader for our time. And with that, ladies, in the Schlapp house, the Schlapp kids are back in school. Three of them are Yay. back in school full time. Kimberly, you mentioned your son was also yeah. going back to school. So I got to tell you, it's a bit of a vacation for mom, but my vacation these days are being spent in the campaign offices and on a bus. And I'm loving every minute of it. Minute of it. But of course, we need you all out there to stay engaged, to volunteer. You got to remember, early voting starts. It's already started in North Carolina. Make sure you know when your early voting starts. I know my uncle, my parents are all going in person. They want to make sure that, er that th their votes are counting. And uh, it's a really, really uh, important time because at the end of the day, we need to deliver for President Trump. We need to make sure we get him to the finish line because that man, talk about these women that don't stop working any minute of the day. Oh, my goodness. President Trump never stops working and never stops fighting for you. So remember to go to armyfortrump.com for more information, for volunteer opportunities. We need your help. We're almost there. We're to the end. We can see the light, but we definitely need to, uh, you know, to win come November 3rd. So I want to thank you all for watching, for always tuning in. We love doing this show. We love talking directly to you all of what's happening here in the campaign, what's happening across the country as well. So keep watching. God bless you all and God bless America. Thank you so much.